Hey everyone, welcome to I Dream of Homestead. I'm Josefina, and today we're in my kitchen talking all about tortillas. Before we jump into all the different things I have here on my counter, my voice sounds funky. I am currently dealing with a sinus infection. I feel like I have been sick all February long. I went from having an upper respiratory infection to getting better for a few days, which is when I recorded those last videos I posted to then it turning into a sinus infection because the pollen has exploded. South Carolina normally has crazy pollen, but we normally don't start this thick and in February. So all of that at once just created this chaos. So it's made recording videos difficult. So let's dive in to all of the tortilla things. So I'm gonna start with the one that is most commonly seen and used and that is this type of tortilla that you get um, at any grocery store, wherever it is that you normally grocery shop, you will find this in the international foods aisle. These are the tortillas that I tell you guys in videos that I call the frying tortillas. So let me show you guys what it looks like up close. This is the kind of tortilla that you normally see. A lot of Mexican restaurants, um, this is what they normally serve or any Tex-Mex restaurants. This is the kind of tortilla that they usually serve the food with. This is the reason why tortillas get such a bad rap. This is a corn tortilla, but it is literally only good for frying because it has preservatives in it. The flavor is nothing like what you would get with one of these beauties. Look at the difference. So this one right here on my right is a corn tortilla that is made with zero preservatives. This is one that you have to keep in your refrigerator. Um, the smell is completely different than what you smell with this. So while this one has that weird like a, like acidic gummy scent to it, this just smells like a corn tortilla. It's just corn. This right here, you can still fry it. You can do all the things that you would normally have done with this, but it's gonna change your mind about the way you think about tortillas. A lot of the restaurants here um, are moving towards providing these tortillas with the meals. And I am so thankful for that because I used to ask for flour tortillas at Mexican restaurants because I knew if I asked for corn, this is what I was gonna get. Uh -uh. So this is my favorite brand of corn tortillas. These are from El Milagro. Um, the company I believe is based out of Ohio. I could be wrong. It was either Ohio or Illinois, um, but there's no preservatives. Literally you look at the ingredients and it's just stone ground corn, water, and calcium hydroxide. And I will explain the calcium hydroxide soon for anybody who says, ew, but what is that? That's not, no, no, no. That is a necessary part of tortillas. The next variation of these corn tortillas are tostadas. You can also get these um, in the international foods aisles of a grocery store. Let me open it up, it's noisy. These are just a fried corn tortilla. So this, is what this becomes when you fry it. So they're crunchy, they're crispy. You can load them up with things. Um, you can use it as a scoop. They do sell versions of these um, in stores that are marked as baked and usually they're more expensive. You can do that at home all on your own by letting it cook low and slow, whether that's on the grill or on a comal. Put it on the lowest setting and just occasionally flip it and you will get that same crunchiness just without the frying oil. You can also stick them in the oven and I can go through that in some other videos. Um, but tostadas, if you don't wanna have to pay the price for that, just fry them on your own. Take a little bit of extra time. You can stick them in the air fryer, the oven, the grill, um, on top of your stove, just again on a low setting. So it's basically dehydrating that tortilla and creating that crispy texture that you get when you fry it. The other kind of tortilla are these flour tortillas that you also get in grocery stores that are pre-made. Um, I have no complaints about them. Um, it's like buying a loaf of bread at the grocery store. Like you can't really complain about a loaf of bread because bread is delicious regardless of who made it. Um, but I do have a favorite. And you guys have seen me cook with these before. And they're these Tortilla Land tortillas. These are raw. These are still dough. Let me try to open it real quick. All right, and what I mean by these are raw is that this is literally dough. Like if I let this warm back up and I balled it back up, I would just get a little ball of dough. 
These have already been cooked, but need to be heated up. Um, so these are already cooked. These are raw. The difference between them is that these obviously need to be kept refrigerated because they don't have preservatives in them. It is like having a homemade loaf of bread versus an already made store-bought loaf of bread. You'll still enjoy, this is still gonna make a great sandwich, but it does not compare to getting a fresh slice of bread. So if you want flour tortillas, you're like me where you've never made them before and you're not really interested in trying because it's just kind of one of those things where somebody makes them really well so you just kind of enjoy that they make them really well these tortilla land torti flour tortillas are the business they are absolutely delicious flour tortillas are the tortilla that everyone automatically thinks of when they think i'm gonna make tacos or i want mexican food this is not the type of tortilla that is eaten traditionally with every meal this is more of like an occasional kind of a thing you're making quesadillas which you could still do with a corn tortilla but making quesadillas of some sort um some certain special dishes even just eating these with refried beans is delicious these are just like every once in a while kind of a meal I'll link all the videos where I've done different things with tortillas, whether that was frying them or um, cooking them to make burritos um, or making them from scratch. I'll link all those down in the description box so you can just see different methods that I have used so far on my channel for using tortillas. Don't worry though, if you don't find what you're looking for on there, eventually in all the videos that I make in the future, there are gonna be a whole lot more tortilla things. So now I've brought you guys in closer because that brings us down to homemade corn tortillas. So this is a bag of masarina. I have been asked um, what the difference is between something like masarina for making corn tortillas and just using regular like cornmeal or some kind of corn flour. Um, or even just using fresh corn to make the tortillas. The difference between this and those other items is that one ingredient that I read to you guys um, on the back of this, which was that uh, <laughs> calcium hydroxide. So in Spanish, that's called gal, and that gal is placed into a pot of water with the dried corn kernels. Um, and that gets soaked and cooked until the outer shell on that corn then gets separated from the kernel. So then those get removed and the corn itself is then grinded up and either immediately made into corn tortillas or it gets dehydrated and then you have the flour ready for you to use. Then all you have to do with this is rehydrate it by adding water and then you make your tortillas. When you look at the ingredients on these bags, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, I can't see that well, but it says on here, the ingredients are white cooked corn and lime. That lime is that gal, which is the calcium or the hydro calcium hydroxide, hydroxide, <laughs> I don't know. I know what it's called in Spanish, calcium hydroxide. So that's what that lime is in there. So this literally is just the two ingredients, and those are the two ingredients that have been used to make corn tortillas since the beginning of time. Um, corn tortillas have gotten a bad rap. Honestly, the Mexican diet has gotten a bad rap because of its heavy use of corn in the diet. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that it's a really well-balanced um, type of diet. So when the corn gets that outer shell removed through the nixtamalization it's the same as when sourdough is made and that dough is allowed to ferment for 24 hours and the gluten then gets broken down making it significantly easier for your body to then digest and process and doesn't have all the effects on your body the way gluten would say if you have like a gluten sensitivity but you can eat sourdough this is essentially like the sourdough version of corn like so this is what that looks like it's got a kind of gritty feel to it it doesn't feel soft the way flour does um, so it's got like that sandy grittiness but it's very finely ground so it's not gonna be like cornmeal where it's like really gritty and um, and it feels honestly like there's sand in your hand this does not have that it's kind of got like the mix of soft and that texture in it. So if you're wanting to make your own um, tortilla flour out of corn, what you can do is go to a local Latino supermarket or a local Mexican store 
and there you'll find um, a lot of times they'll have it in like really small packets so that you can do things like cure um, clay pots after you've purchased them so they'll sell them in just like these really small packets so that you can use it for something like that a lot of times they'll have them already portioned out in like ziploc bags where it's a large gallon size ziploc bag or they'll come in like a paper packaging like this um, and so you'll want to ask for cal which I will put that down here for you. It's three letters, C-A-L. So you'll use that to process the corn. Um, I have never done that myself. I know that if you do um, look up on YouTube or Google somewhere that there's definitely gonna be lots of videos on it. I personally, again, have never tried it myself. I would really like to one day. The far off goal for me in the future that I really would like to be successful at growing corn and then processing it to make my own tortillas and grinding it. You can also find grinding mills um, on on like Amazon, you can find them in those Latino supermarkets. A lot of times they have those already available for you so you can get literally everything there. Um, you can even, if you want to practice in the Latino supermarkets, they will sell, um, sometimes I'll see them in like big barrels with scoops so that you can get your own portion of it. They'll already have them portioned out in gallon Ziploc bags, but it's um, the dried corn. Just ask there if they've got any corn for making tortillas, along with the gal, and if you wanna get the grinder there, um, you can do that as well. I will link some down in the description box because I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to get those too. <laughs> um, so I did find some on Amazon that I've got on my wish list. So no matter which tortilla you get, whichever one you have access to, all three of these do need to be heated on a dry skillet. I've even done it directly on the stove. That's like a regular thing. If I just want like one or two tortillas and I don't wanna have to wait for the hokomal, I would literally just cook it right over an open flame. Um, but they do need to be cooked because like I've explained to you guys in other videos, if you take, especially the corn tortillas, and you try to eat them, first of all, it's not gonna taste right. And you, the texture is weird, the flavor is not the same, but you're also gonna have this issue of trying to um, eat from it by bending it, folding it, and it's just going to split and crack right away. The same applies with those plastic packaged tortillas with the preservatives in them. This is gonna happen. Versus when you cook them on a comal first, they become pliable like I've shown you guys in other videos. So that's it on the tortilla explanations. I hope you guys found this video informative. Um, I hope that I've answered any questions that you might have about tortillas and all the different kinds. If there is something that I did not cover that you've got questions about, please feel free to put those down in the comments and I will respond back to you as soon as I can. Um, if there's any information that you want others to know about that you do know about tortillas, put those also down in the comments so that others can check that out. I'm going to put links to as much of this stuff as I can down in the description box um, along with the, my favorite brand so that you can look into where you can get access to those. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I hope that you're willing to hit that subscribe button and stick around with me for a while on my journey to becoming a homesteader. I'll see you in the next one.